Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well, hanging in there. I would say that my two biggest hobbies or passions or interests are travel and photography. And obviously the travel thing is on hold at the moment. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about some camera stuff, specifically what is in my camera bag, the bulk of the gear that I'm using to shoot my videos right now, the cameras, the lenses. I love talking about this stuff. I could talk about it all day. And I know some of you are into it too, because I get quite a few comments and messages asking about what I'm currently shooting with. And I did a video last year talking about the gear that I was shooting with, but about six months ago, I took everything that I had, all of the cameras, lenses, anything that I could trade in. I went and traded it in and started over with a completely new system that I've been shooting on ever since. Starting with the camera bag that I'm currently using, this is the Wandered Provoke 21 liter. They also make a 31 liter version that's a little bit bigger and it comes in a few different colors. Like every camera enthusiast out there, I am on a never ending search for the the perfect camera bag and I haven't found it yet, but I do like this one for a lot of reasons. First, I think it looks really nice. It has this like sleek, modern, kind of minimalist look to it. So I use this as my day bag to carry my equipment around and I also use it as a carry-on bag when I'm flying. So the main compartment of this bag unzips and opens from the back. You get two padded compartments here, one for a laptop, one for a tablet. This fits my six 16 inch MacBook Pro. And then the main area of the bag has these two zippered compartments. And this is actually the thing that when I first saw this bag, I wasn't really sold on. But now that I've used this bag, I actually find that the two compartments makes it much more versatile and I'll explain why. The struggle I've always had when shopping for camera bags, and I think a lot of people experience this, is it's difficult to find one that can hold a lot of camera gear and also has space for non-camera stuff, like if you wanna take a jacket with you. And I found a system with this bag that makes that work. So the way that I ordered this bag, you can order it empty, like with no camera inserts or cubes in it, or you can order it in a bundle. And I think there's like a regular bundle, which is what I ordered that comes with just a cube for this lower section, or you can order a pro bundle that comes with a mega cube that is the entire size of like the entire back of the bag, because this isn't like a firm separator. This is just a little flimsy thing right here. Like you can push stuff behind it. But I went with the regular bundle with the smaller or normal sized cube so that it wasn't taking up this space up here and then I could utilize it for more everyday stuff. As you can see, the bag has this Velcro roll top section. Now I can fit a ton of stuff in the top of this bag. I can put a jacket, I can put a water bottle, I can put snacks. I can put all my airplane essentials like my noise canceling headphones and anything else up in here. But you might be thinking, then you have the dilemma of if this is all the gear that you can carry, like sometimes that's not gonna be enough space. So what I did is Wandered makes a little like mini cube that is designed for this bag that you can slide down the roll top part that perfectly fits in this top compartment. I'm just gonna do it so you guys can see actually what I'm talking about here. Then I have even more space for actual gear in the bag. There is a side access zip here so you can load your camera into the inner cube with it kind of ready to pull out right here for quick access. It has a cool little back zip compartment right here that you can put your passport or your money or anything that you want up next against your back while you're carrying it so no one can get in there. If you order one of the bundles, it comes with these attachable, detachable hip belts, which was a must for me when looking for a bag. It has a great expandable side pocket here for a water bottle. It also holds my tripod, which I really like. And also this front section actually holds quite a bit in the zipper. So moving on to talking about the cameras that I use, let's talk about my main camera, which is on my tripod right now. I'm filming with it. It is the Sony a7 III. It's a full frame mirrorless camera that really is designed for the hybrid shooter, meaning somebody who does both photography and videography. It has 24 megapixels, dual card slots, in-body image stabilization. It shoots 4K video at up to 30 frames per second, or it does 120 frames per second at 1080, which is a feature I use so much when I'm shooting cinematic stuff when I'm traveling. Like anytime I wanna shoot wildlife, 
or anything in motion, I love shooting at 120 frames per second. As for the lenses I use for this camera, there are three main lenses that I find myself circulating between the most. The first one is what I'm using right now. This is the Sony 24 millimeter 1.4 G Master lens. This is such a great lens if you're looking for a wide angle that still has a shallow depth of field because I love a blurry background in both my photo and video. Also because of the 1.4 aperture, it's great for astrophotography or anything at night. However, it is quite an expensive lens. And I did want to mention if you are looking for for something similar that is, I don't wanna call it like a budget option because I think there is no such thing as like a budget option in camera gear in the sense that it's all expensive. Even cheap lenses are super expensive. I mean, relatively maybe compared to like higher end lenses, it's like a budget version. Anyway, a not so crazy expensive, but somewhat similar lens that Sony offers to this one is the 28 millimeter F2. I would highly recommend it. And it's about a third of the price. Let's talk about my workhorse lens. This is the Tamron 28 to 75 f 2.8 lens. I have used this 10 times more than any other lens that I own for this camera. If you were going to buy this camera and only get one lens with it, this is the one that I would say you have to get. This 28 to 75 focal range covers 90% of what I'm looking to shoot. The 2.8 aperture still lets in a lot of light and I still get some background separation. And the Tamron version of this lens is almost a third of the price of the Sony equivalent, which is insane. Now, granted the Sony version does have a better build. There is a lot of plastic in this lens, but it's also smaller and lighter, which makes it even better for travel. Oh, and also this is the Polar Pro Lens Defender lens cover, and it is the best thing in the entire world. And then this third lens I have to talk about is the one that just makes me giddy when I'm shooting with it. It is the Zeiss Bodice, Baddice, I hear it pronounced different ways, 85 millimeter 1.8 lens. For starters, it does all of the work for me. Like I could point this lens at a pile of trash and it would make it look beautiful. Anything that you shoot with this lens looks good because it compresses that background. You get that really shallow depth of field. It just makes everything look amazing. I love shooting B-roll on this. I love shooting photos on this. It's also weather sealed and it has image stabilization, which makes it even better for video. If I could only have one lens second to my Tamron lens because this isn't very versatile. These are the two I would choose, no question. Okay, moving on. I feel like this is going to be kind of a long video and the light outside, it's one of those days where it's like it's sunny and then it's cloudy, then it's sunny again. And I had to like adjust the windows. So if the light is all over the place in this video, the next camera that I use is the Sony RX100 Mark 7. This is my little vlogging camera here with the flip up screen. This thing is a powerhouse. You wouldn't think it looking at it because it's so small, but the zoom on this thing is like binoculars. It is insane. Like you start zooming in and it just goes and goes and goes and goes. It also has a mic jack, which was a huge selling point for me. And I have a little like half cage mounting rig on here. This is by UU rig and it has a cold shoe mount here on the side so that I can mount my mic on the camera. The mic that I use for vlogging is the Rode Video Micro and I love this microphone so much because it runs off of the camera's battery. So there's no way to charge this. There's no batteries needed. You're never going to get out somewhere and go to turn on your mic and find out that it's dead. So I can slip it right here in the cold shoe mount on the side, plug it into the mic jack, and then I can flip up the back screen here. And this is the handheld filming setup that I use when I'm vlogging and filming myself. It's really nice. I also use the Manfrotto Pixie tripod that I can screw on the bottom here. And there you go. You have your little vlogging setup. The third camera I wanna share with you guys today is one that I picked up just a few months ago. It's the most recent edition. And it is the camera that I didn't even realize I needed until I used. It. This is the DJI Osmo Pocket. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. It's this tiny little pocket sized camera that has a three axis gimbal to get stabilized footage. See the camera? I can move this thing back and forth and that camera head does not turn. 
Do you see this? It has a little screen on the back so you can actually see what you're filming. And I purchased this accessory that slides in right here that gives you a wheel so you can actually control it. And the image quality is really quite good. Like I was impressed and it does 4K 60, which is just, it's so cool. So that is the bulk of the camera gear that I'm using and rotating through my camera bag these days. If you wanna see more of what I'm using, you can check out the shop page on my website because I just refreshed my website. It's been on my to-do list for like a year to do a redesign and kind of add more to it. So I decided to go ahead and do that and I'm super happy with how it turned out. Speaking of websites, shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I built my website on Squarespace a couple years ago, before I ever worked with them for sponsorships, um, I used them because it looked easy and it is extremely easy. There's this option called the parallax feature, I think, in the layout that I have, where it makes the page look like it's scrolling past an image. Like it's this really cool effect and all I had to do was like click a button to enable it and then it started doing it. You can build any kind of site on Squarespace. You can have a store, a blog, a portfolio. They have 24 seven customer service. So head over to squarespace.com to sign up for a free trial and when your site is all ready to go, you can visit squarespace.com slash Allison Anderson to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you are staying safe, staying healthy, and I will see you in the next one.